on the spot. We get caught up with the new wares coming to PlayStation Network and go on location for the multiplayer reveal for Homefront. We get double demos for Dead Space 2 and spare parts, and stay tuned at the end of the show for a trivia bonanza. Today on the spot. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Today on the Spot for Saturday, January 22nd. I'm your host, Carol Pettit, joined today by my co-host, Maxwell McGee. Max, 3DS, big stuff. You, you and a bunch of the other uh, crew just got back from New York, actually. We did. GameSpot was out in full force, hitting up the Big Apple this week. We uh, covered a bunch of video content, a bunch of previews. We got a lot of great stuff up on the site now, and uh, you can go online and check it out. Awesome. Well, obviously, the 3DS is big, big news right now, but it's not the only news. Let's see what else is going on as we check in with the GameSpot News Desk. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News Update for Saturday, January 22nd. I'm Tor Thorson. Has hell frozen over? Are pigs flying? Dogs and cats living together? Mass hysteria! Yes, after nearly 14 years, the impossible has been made possible. Duke Nukem Forever finally has a release date. The long, long, long-awaited shooter will finally come out on May 3rd for North America for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. A worldwide release will follow three days later. Initially announced in 1997, Duke Nukem Forever was synonymous with vaporware for over a decade. While original studio 3D Realms went through at least two engine changes, with its protracted development reportedly costing over $20 million to $30 million. In other news, another highly anticipated game also has received a release date. The new Mortal Kombat game, which is titled Mortal Kombat, will literally hit the PS3 and Xbox 360 on April 19th. As the first installment in the franchise since 2008's T14-rated Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, the upcoming Mortal Kombat was designed with the goal of re-establishing the brand, according to publisher Warner Brothers. That means a return to the series' signature over-the-top fatalities and copious quantities of blood and guts. The game's roster will also be a throwback of sorts, with all of the fighters pulled from the first three games in the series. There is one notable exception, as the PlayStation 3 version will feature God of War protecting as Kratos as a playable character. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for Saturday, January 22nd. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. All right, so coming up in the program, we've got a demo for Spare Parts, which is available on PSN this week. But for the full PlayStation Network goodness, let's check out this week on PlayStation Network. This week on PlayStation Network, in downloadable games, Mass Effect 2 has landed on PlayStation 3. Entire human colonies are disappearing, and as Commander Shepard, you must assemble the galaxy's deadliest team to stop the threat. Built on the Mass Effect 3 engine, and including free access to DLC, this is a must play. Then grab a robo friend and play Spare Parts. Spare Parts tells the story of two courageous robots, Marty and Chip, who have been dumped on a strange planet and must search the hostile environment for parts to repair an abandoned spaceship. Can't wait for the full download? There's a demo. Then shoot with the move in Modern Combat Domination. Square off in 16 player battles in 6 modes and complete objectives to rule the leaderboards. While you're at it, grab the demo and compete to launch or disarm Scud missiles. Also in downloads, PS1 Classics this week offers up Metal Slug X and Mega Man. In game add-ons, Little Big Planet 2 gets the rare t-shirt. Mod Nation Racers as DLC, including Are We There Yet, Superfan Modern Cart, Superfan Mod, and Unlock All Key. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood ups the ante with the Animus Project Update 2.0. Ruse gets the Chimera Pack. Tron Evolution gets a multiplayer map pack. EA Sports Active 2 gets the Nike Low Impact Starter Pack. Mass Effect 2 drops a ton of DLC. Dance Dance Revolution gets the greatest hits and a large number of downloads, and the usual suspects DJ Hero 2, Def Jam Rap Star, and Rock Band 3 add new packs and tracks. Game trailers this week include the Nailed Music trailer, Back to the Future The Game Behind the Scenes Part 1, and the Game Network trailer, Ricochet HD trailer, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood Animus Project Update 2.0 trailer, Auditorium HD Network trailer, Mod Nation Racers DLC Preview trailer, and a ton of Little Big Planet 2 clips. That's all the time we have, folks. Join us next week for more This Week on PlayStation Network. As Max mentioned a little while ago, we have a demo of Spare Parts. This is a new game out on XBLA and PSN this week. Let's take a look. Hey, everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. I'm joined by Brendan here from EA to show us Spare Parts on Xbox Live Arcade. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us about Spare Parts. 
In Spare Parts, you play as Marty or Chip, mm -hmm. two robots that have been cast aside and abandoned on an alien planet. Oh, well, that's sad. <laughs> it is, but luckily, you are uh, resurrected by Conrad, uh, mm -hmm. an AI from a ship that had crashed there previously, and he's stuck there, and he realizes that you guys are capable of finding the pieces of his ship mm -hmm. so you can uh, build the ship back together and get off the island. Find your way home. Unfortunately, okay. uh, after you start walking around, yeah. then the uh, evil Lord Solba um, recognizes that he might have missed you guys when he jettisoned you onto the island. So he comes back to finish a job with his evil minions, the Crowfax. Mm -hmm. And then you have a little bit more uh, action to deal with. Okay, sounds good. Let's jump right in and take All a look. Right. So a cooperative game, yes. Yes, the game is single player or cooperative. Mm -hmm. It is, um, you can jump in, jump out. Uh, there's local and Xbox Live. And right now, here I am, Marty. So I'm, I'm a robot, and uh, okay. the great part about being a robot is that uh, in addition to being durable and metal and having lots of great um, animations <laughs> with it, is that I can use my spare parts. So I can do all these different moves here. So here I've got my uh, strong arms. I can charge these up. Oh, they're like upgrades. Yes, you exactly. You can see the enemies are, are um, dropping action points that I can collect and then upgrade my parts later on. So here I have my x-ray specs and these can help me look for clues in the environment. So I'm seeing that, okay, this looks like a weak spot in this well. I'll be able to use my strong arms mm -hmm. to bust through that. Always favorite are the rocket boots. Oh, I like rockets. Yep. The opposite of that is the magnet boots. You can stick onto walls that you need to and then create some EMP sparks. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, x-ray. Okay, so here I've got a wall I can bust through. It's a nice area in the jungle. Yeah, the, the levels are, are really beautiful. A lot of care and, and craftsmanship went into this game, and it's a little bit different than the standard like lava world, ice world. This is a living planet, mm -hmm. and you, it's a primarily jungle-based ecosystem, but you'll travel through uh, some like jungle rapids, the dangerous spider monkey caves, some beautiful vistas, um, and an ancient temple from a previous civilization that lived here. So there's like a mix of action and puzzle solving as well? Exactly. You'll have lots of action, um, but there's lots of environmental uh, puzzles to solve as well. What are those guys? These are some <laughs> alien grubs that I will dispatch <laughs> readily. Are the enemy types all different depending on the area? Yeah, this is earlier on, so the Crowfax haven't completely been um, updated yet, but you'll see various Crowfax stormtroopers come in and they'll all, they'll all have different um, abilities. One guy will have a huge spiky head. <laughs> okay, these guys are without helmets. They're pretty easy to dispatch. Here's a couple of Crowfax. But they will get really nasty. There's a guy with a spiky head who will charge you, who I, I really hate him. I usually have to uh, put on the rocket boots, blast him on fire, and that lights him on fire, and then uh, weaken him while he's running around screaming on fire. So these parts, are you purchasing them as you go, or you find them in the environment? You'll, you'll find the parts, as well as your ship parts, as you're um, traversing the environment, but then you'll be able to upgrade them at your ship hub. Mm -hmm. oh, and nice. the, the ship hub, uh, Conrad, mm -hmm. he's, uh, see I just got the Brunswick Communicator Extender. We have a lot of, uh, each part is individually named after uh, a member of the dev team or other sci-fi references, so it's kind <laughs> of a nice little Easter egg on all the parts. I wanted to see if I was in the game, but the developer won't let, uh, he won't tell me until I find all the parts. And I'm still <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> I'm once still, you play I'm still the collecting game. <laughs> all of them in mine. Um, but the, yeah, the ship, the ship's AI core is voiced by Simon Pegg, and and he's ah. from uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Really funny guy. Does a really great reading. Um, he guides you through the levels. He'll teleport you as you get stuck or as you complete <laughs> the level, and uh, we'll just generally help you uh, get off the. Uh, get off the planet because that's what he wants to do too. Oh, that's cool. You can see here there's a um, th that white thing I'm trying to clear off these Crowfax so I can get to. That is a uh, piece of their technology that using my nano arms mm -hmm. I should be able to hack into. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many different like spare part upgrades um, will you be able to find? Well, I have all uh, five right now, mm -hmm. but each of them has, has three levels 
uh, that you can upgrade. And then you can also upgrade things like throwing your own spare parts. Is that a watermelon? Uh, yeah, there's a watermelon. There's, there's lots of great tweaks like that. So um, you start off, you're just literally throwing nuts and bolts. Yeah. Now I'm kind of throwing a, a little bit more Ninja Star-esque, <laughs> and then you can eventually be throwing like powerful comets at the enemies. So it's oh, a wow. really quirky, fun upgrade. <laughs> I'm going to actually cut to the uh, co-op part now. All right, so now I'm going to jump in with you playing co-op. Yep, we're on the Vista Cliffs right now. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the really strong points of the game. Uh, this is a really fun game to play Yay. with a friend. Uh, is there friendly with, fire? Uh, I think we, we turn friendly fire <laughs> off. You can turn it on or off. It's local, it's um, Xbox Live, drop in, drop out. We make mm -hmm. it really easy to play with a friend or to uh, stop playing with a friend if you don't want to. <laughs> we said, like, like so with the friendly fire, we turn that off. So, I, you know, easy girlfriend game so you don't end up getting into fights by accidentally hitting each other. Use All my, right, punching. You know, take down that wall so they can't follow us, the bridge. And, I mean, this this reminds me of just like the, the golden age of gaming growing up where you're able to play cooperatively with oh, a friend, yeah. have a really good time, you're solving stuff together. You can do and combos together too, right? We can do combos together. If we double jump or together, we'll be able to restore our health. There we go, there we got go. our health Yay. bonus. And then we'll be able to solve some puzzles as well. So we'll go over here. Um, Punch this whoa, off the cliff. and I did not fall off the cliff. Ooh. All right, so I'm going to hack into this technology here. Mm -hmm. And this is going to raise up a platform from below. Now, if I try and move away, yeah. it's going to drop on it. So I need to stay here, and you need to uh, jump, on it. jump on that. Whoa. There you go. Yay, part 406. Very cool. Whoops. Uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> So oh you can see, it's it. pretty friendly. You, you lost a couple action points, but you know, respawn where you need to. So all right, cool. Keeps keeps you in the game. Keeps you playing forward progress. Nice. So the game is out already on XBLA. XBLA and PS3. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred Microsoft points. Uh, Ten dollars on PSN. Uh huh. And just a really enjoyable game. A beautiful art style. Uh, definitely, you can see a care in the craftsmanship. A really creative design. And, and like I said, it reminds me of the good old days of when I'd see something new on like you know Nintendo or Super Nintendo or Genesis, and yeah. it's just a, a more interesting style than a lot of things you see today. And I, and I think a lot of people will really like it and really enjoy playing with friends. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. And now um, we're also giving away codes for spare parts at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. And now on with the rest of the show. Bye, guys. All right, so that was your look at Spare Parts. Now, Carol, I understand THQ had an event last week and they had a lot to show off. They sure did. And uh, one of the biggest things they're showing off right now is Homefront. They actually revealed the multiplayer features of this game. Let's take a look. Hey folks, Sean McInnes here in New York City, home of Chaos Studios, who happen to be developing THQ's upcoming first-person shooter, Homefront. And I've got Dave Vatipka here, the creative director on the game, who's here to tell us a little bit about it. Dave, thanks for taking the time to join us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no, my pleasure, definitely. So, Homefront, Dave, set the stage for us. What's the setting of this game? Why did you guys go with this this whole North Korean invasion, the, the near future setting? What sort of themes are you trying to hit on? What sort of emotions are you trying to dig out of people? Well, there's a lot of questions in there, but I'll start with the, the premise. So, Homefront's really set um, in a what if scenario. We said, what if the USA was occupied and invaded by an enemy force, right? You know, that's that's sort of a foreign concept, but that's one thing that we make, that we feel makes it so interesting, actually, because trying to imagine that and experience that, you know, is, it hasn't really, the US has never really been depicted like that before in an occupation state or partially occupied state. So we really wanted to explore that idea and take this familiar America that we all know from either living here or movies and film, and see what it would be like in the year 2027. You know, so we're fighting in suburbs, we're fighting in, you know, uh, suburban backyards, we're fighting in highway interchanges that you drive driven over every day, we're fighting in strip malls, you know, in restaurants, and we're fighting in places that, you know, if, you, if you've been you know, around America or if you've seen some films from America, you're going to recognize these places and you're going to think, wow, what would it be like if we had a battle here? You know, that's the kind of question we're trying to answer. 
Yeah, we started off with the idea to really start in your backyard. You know, instead of being at the Washington Monument or the White House or these really big set pieces, you know, we do have a little bit of that in the game with the Golden Gate Bridge at the end. But the campaign starts off in, you know, your hometown and fighting for your family, where you live, where you shop, you know, that's really personal. And that's kind of what, what Homefront touches on from an emotional standpoint. You know, it means a lot more when you're defending your living room compared to like, you know, a government building, for example. Um, on the multiplayer side, you actually get to play the skirmishes between the fractured US military and the Greater Korean Republic Army. So it's in the early years of the occupation, you know, the skirmishes between these two military forces. And from a gameplay standpoint, we're really focusing on gameplay innovations, largely in the multiplayer. Battle points is something we've announced, this in-game in -game economy. So battle points is a really interesting dynamic system. The way it works is that every action you do in the game earns you points. So you kill an enemy, you earn some points. You capture an objective, you earn some points. You know, mark someone with your recon drone, you earn some points. And then you can spend those points. And you can spend those things on the fly. As you're running around the map, you can say, purchase a flak jacket to help you survive longer, purchase a UAV scan to show you where the enemies are, you can even purchase an airstrike you know, if you've saved up enough points. And then at the spawn screen you can decide if you want to purchase a vehicle. So it really creates what we call this spend or save philosophy. You know, are you the type of player who likes to you know, run around and you know, buy thermal goggles and, you know, every time they spawn and try and you know, uh, use your points as you're earning them? Or are you the type of player who wants to save up and you know, buy an Apache helicopter? Um, Battle Commander is something we just announced today as well, which is this AI general that pits two teams against each other and puts the player on a kill streak and puts additional hunters hunting him. And it really creates for this dynamic, emergent gameplay with a lot of sort of bragging rights and, you know, targeted encounters. And we're kind of saying that it makes large-scale warfare personal. Priority threat. An enemy unit has killed multiple comrades. So Battle Commander is a new, th new feature that we're talking about today. The way it works is it's basically an AI general, and it looks at the battlefield. And each team has one of these generals, and it's looking for players that are performing well, and it's going to assign them a mission, and it's going to assign them a star ranking. So if you're doing well, say you're on a streak, you've got a one-star level mission. And then as you start to do better and you stay on your streak, you'll get two stars, three stars. Every time you rank up, you're getting a buff, you're getting a reward. You're getting more battle points, but you're also getting a special reward that's going to help you keep the state help you stay alive longer. So it's going to give you a flak jacket, for example, a UAV scan, a faster run speed, more weapon damage. All those things are going to help you stay alive. If you're in a vehicle, you're also going to get type of buffs that are going to help your vehicle stay alive longer. But at the same time, the enemy commander is looking out for those players and marking those as priority threats for his team and assigning players to take you out. So the more levels of stars you're getting, the more players are coming after you. So it creates this kind of dynamic system where players are pitted against each other. It really creates these really interesting emergency and gameplay scenarios. Priority threat neutralized. Well done, comrade. Now, uh, it sounds like this is a pretty unique approach to one of the uh, themes in first-person shooters over the years, which is, you know, rewarding players for doing well on the, on the battlefield, give them new, cool goodies as they do better. But, you know, one of the common critiques of that is that it's sort of, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. So how do you guys make sure that things aren't totally imbalanced out there, that the guys who are just starting out still have a chance to do well? Absolutely. I mean, we see those as issues too, and that's why you know we designed the battle point system to really help uh, you know solve those issues and battle commander. So what you'll see with battle points is that because you're accruing these points for every action you do, you can die a lot but still earn points on every life and really save up those points. And you know, even if you're not a great player, by the end of a match, you can buy a tank, you can buy a helicopter. We want every player to have access to these cool toys. We also looked at how we can use those, you know, skilled players and more casual players and, you know, bring them together with the battle commander system. So the way that works is that those skilled players are going to be ranking up, they're going to be getting up to four or five stars, they're going to become a big threat. But then the, uh, the flip side of that is that those uh, less, less hardcore players are going to be assigned to take them out. And when they do, they're going to be rewarded with battle points. So Dave, uh, Homefront is a game that you guys have been showing off for quite a while now. I mean, it had a very big showing back at E3, and here we are in January. So you've, you've had some time to demo it to the public. Tell us about the sort of reactions that you're getting with Homefront, because it is a game that sort of touches on some hot-button issues. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I mean, everybody that's seen it has been really positive, and, and we really feel great about that. You know, we were hoping that this title would connect with the people in ways that, you know, the most modern shooters don't really have that element to it, sort of that human emotional side, that defending my home, you know, occupation side of it. Um, you know, we got North Korea in there, so people are, you know, this... We go to E3 and then Kim Jong-il will launch some nuclear missile, missile tests, right? So it's very coincidental. So we've gotten sort of a lot of discussion on, on boards. And, you know, there'll be an article about um, the bus ride in Chapter 1 where you see some sort of, you know, traumatizing things happening to civilians. And, 
you know, we had an article on one of the websites that had, I don't know, thousands of reader comments sort of debating, you know, should games go there, should they not go there, can you have fun while you're sort of upset and so on. Um, but you know, when you, when you start playing Home Front, you, you really have a reason to pick up the gun. And we're really happy to see that people are really attaching to it that way. I'm sure a lot of people are eager to pick up the gun, so to speak. So can you uh, finish us off by letting us know when the game's going to be out in stores and the platforms it'll be available on? Sure. Homefront will be shipping March 8th on PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. Thanks a lot, Dave. There you guys have it. Homefront, courtesy of Dave Vitipka from Chaos Studios. Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here, and it is time for your daily demo. We've got uh, one of the biggest games of January set to show you guys, and that is, of course, Dead Space 2, courtesy of our good friend Steve Papoutsis from Visceral Games. Steve? Hey, Sean, how you doing today? Good, good. Always, always nice to have a familiar face on the show. Um, you know, you guys brought me a nice, cool plasma cutter. That's awesome. I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, you guys are just a couple days away from releasing the game. It's a long time in the making, a lot of, I'd imagine a lot of pressure, but how does it feel to finally getting, about to get the game out in stores? Well, we're pretty pumped about it. Uh, you know, right now is the, the period of time where everybody on the team's just kind of sitting there at their desk waiting to see what the players are gonna think of our game. You know, we're certainly checking all the websites and whatnots <laughs> to see if we're getting uh, reviews coming in, and, and we're super excited about that. Um, it's kind of that moment where we can see uh, what everybody thinks of the work that we did. So we're very excited about that. Cool. Sounds good. And you were actually kind enough to bring uh, a copy of the game into the office today. And we're going to check out a nice little, uh, nice little five-minute demo to see a little taste of what people can find in store for uh, Dead Space 2. So Excellent. Let's take a look at that one right now. Let's do it. All right. So first of all, check this out. Bam. This is something we haven't shown anybody. This is uh, a cool new suit here. The vintage suit. That is, that's an awesome, that looks like some serious deep sea scuba diving action, except uh, Isaac is in space, so I don't imagine there's a lot of scuba going on. Let's go deep space, <laughs> zero G diving. exploration Perfect. thing. Perfect, that works. So there's that. And then people <laughs> may recognize the Ripper. Oh, Bam. Nice. Nice. That's some rippage. So let's go ahead and check out what's inside the uh, pressurized fuel storage area. All right, let's do it. First thing for those people looking for power nodes, bam, there's one right here. So remember to do that. See Key to that. upgrading your goodies, right? It is, it is. So let's take a look around. Uh-oh. These are the cysts that we've kind of shown off. So you want to, you know, I heard that. I heard him, so I'm going to want to kind of go up there and not get busticated by that. Ooh, ammo. Nice. Like that. Come on. What's this? What's this? What's this? Audio log. Bam. Play it. Move around while it's playing. Oh, look at that. You even have some uh, subtitle of John. Nice. For those that may have the sound off because they're at work or something. <laughs> which means they can't hear us right now. Which would be a travesty. It <laughs> would just be horrible. I highly recommend volume for this. Okay. So here we go. A little something something. For the log to end. That seems like a little bit of foreshadowing right there. Like maybe good things are not around the corner. It's possible. I mean, when you do see a corpse, it could mean somebody died. You guys are fond of uh, scaring people. Uh oh. Whoa. What's that? Guess what that is. Could be one dead oh. necromorph. Eat it. Bam. Well, it was a necromorph with legs, but it's not anymore. And I can just grab that claw and then pow. Uh, that too. Nice. I'll do a little stomp. Uh oh. One of his buddies is coming. You know what's great about the Ripper is I can just ripper it up. <laughs> and look at that. See? You can get the little drops he's got in there. A little drop. A little force gun ammo, I think that was. He's an awesome weapon. You just kind of see it. Awesome. Green box. Oh, what? Oh, what? no. Behind you. Hey, what? See how that is. <laughs> Sorry. The demo. Nice. We handled that though. Good teamwork. Yeah, definitely. All right. I think I, I like to think I played a vital part in your surviving that attack. You did. You did. And it was good. And see, sometimes people can play the game with a friend and have that experience where <laughs> one can kind of look around, make sure nothing's happening. Whoa, what's back there? Actually, make sure nothing weird's happening. Ooh, I got a stasis canister. Nice. These are new. 
So, uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on. That's Come like a nice out. guinea pig to try that let's, stasis Let's cancer. try it out. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. Those guys are really smart. We kind of... Yeah, I've got to talk to the guys about that. <laughs> maybe a little here. too smart. You guys maybe went overboard with the AI this time. A little bit. Um, now I'm, I'm actually a little frightened. <laughs> and my palms are sweating because I don't want to die. I have had a run of luck on the demos, the live demos. Okay, this is really scary. I'm actually scared. <laughs> and that shouldn't be happening. I will get some plasma cutter ammo and I will feel better. I'll reload my ripper. Oh, oh, look at that. Exploder. Bam. Exploded. Nice. Exploder. Exploded. That's what you got to do. That's how you run it. Oh, I, I see him. He's climbing up on those uh, See how crates. sneaky? Oh, boy. Oh, no. Look at this. Hi. Eat Ripper. <laughs> Bam. Nice. Screw him up. See what other weapons I have. Ooh, I got the Seeker Rifle. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Ooh. Stasis. Now, the Seeker Rifle's cool because you can zoom in. Oh, nice. And so... You know, people were saying, oh, you got to stop, guys, to get the loots out. Wrong. You could just TK something into them and get the loots. So if you don't want to stomp, which I find extremely fun, <laughs> just sit there and stomp. Um, but you could do that. You could also just pick up the body, fling it with TK to get the loots, or you could shoot it if you want to waste a, a precious shot. Nice. Um, but, you know, here's the, uh, again, Seeker Rifle. Kind of new. I don't think we showed anybody this, really. Maybe. Could have been. Don't know. But uh, we'll check it out. So you else. can get, you can really fine tune your aiming with that gun. Get a little more pinpoint accuracy on what body parts you want to shoot. That's right. We can we could do some pinpoint accuracy on the strategic dismemberment with uh, with that zoom. That's good. Good commentary. That is what I would call ultra strategic dismemberment. It is. Ooh, it's all dark and creepy. Let's see. Ooh, health. I like health. That'll come in handy, I think. Well, another one of these here stasis canisters. Better not get jacked again. <laughs> Double it up, run it, let's go. Oh, look at that, oh, hi, hi. Watch what happens, ow. Ooh, nice. And then, let's go with the grenade option. Dead. <laughs> Slice, dice, oh boy. Oh no, you got another buddy. Oh, dude, look at the, I love it. Look at oh, that. the, look at the blood. blood is still in stasis. It's like a symphony of fun. <laughs> okay, oh god, oh. oh no, you didn't see that. Let's cut, cut, no, <laughs> we don't need to cut. I can handle these chumps. See, look, bam. Limb, thank you. Nothing quite like finishing an enemy off with its own severed limb. No, it's, it's kind of how we do it. We like to run it up, do that kind of thing. Oh boy, hey, oh geez. Oh You're man, I am, I am getting low on health. We might have to wrap it up here so I don't <laughs> die and wreck my perfect streak. Hey, look at that little health I had in my, my inventories. Oh geez, oh geez. Let's see, come on. Oh, Those guys are a lot trickier than anything I remember from the first game. I don't seem to recall dudes sort of like seeing you running off, going hiding, and then sort of like stalking you almost. Yep, and that's why we call him the stalker. Uh, <laughs> we definitely wanted to create uh, a new enemy that kind of made you feel like they were reacting to what you were doing and just kind of kept you on your toes. And as you can see here, they're, they're pretty good at keeping us on our toes, even though uh, I have played this game many a time. <laughs> many, many times, I'm sure. Let's see what's, uh, let's see what what fun lies around this corner. Here's a, oh geez. Ooh, Guardian, and pro tip, this is it, live on the spot. Watch this, bam, you got. <laughs> and that is the pro tip of this demo because I just took him out with one shot, I believe. Oh wait, is he still alive? Oh no, he's not. <laughs> Guess what, not alive. And then one other super secret for those, those viewing this right now, check this out, come on. Watch this, come this way, over here. One might go this way, because that might be where you think you need to go, right. but if you go back here, Ooh. into Dark Town, look at this. Bam, oh. there's stuff. Some credits. Got a schematic, got some seeker shells. And another dead body. Some super health thing, body. <laughs> and, just to TK around a bit. Yeah, just cause it's fun. And then I do that too. <laughs> uh, I thought he was cute. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the demos. Cool. Well, we, we saw some nice pro tips. We saw some nice hidden corners. So, uh, and we saw a whole lot of nice ultra strategic dismemberment. So always very much appreciated. Steve, 
before people pick up the game on Tuesday, any other advice, any other suggestions to, to maximize enjoyment of Dead Space 2? To maximize the fun? I know personally, in my experience with Dead Space 1, play it in the dark with headphones on. That's yes. what I like to do. I like that. I like playing it in the dark with surround or headphones mm -hmm. on is really great. Um, it's also fun to play it with a friend. Yeah. You know, some, that, that lessens the scariness a little bit, but then you know they can help you out like you help me out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest thing is just play it and have fun. And you know we'd love to hear what everybody thinks about it. We're really stoked to see what uh, what the players think and you know tweet about it, whatever. <laughs> uh, really into that. So cool. All right, Steve. Well, I appreciate you coming by. Thanks a lot. It's been a lot of fun checking out the development of this game over the past year, and it looks like you guys put together. A nice one, so uh, congratulations there. Thank you. All right, so there you guys have it. That's your daily demo. On with the rest of the show. But before we do that, check out these sweet trivia prizes coming up at the end of the show. A lot of good Dead Space stuff, so make sure to stick around for the end of the program. Okay, folks, we have so much trivia for you today, so many great prizes to give away. Uh, if you think you know the answer to any of the trivia questions we're going to ask you, uh, you can email them to us at onthespot at gamespot.com or enter them in the trivia module on the side of the page. First off, we have tons of Dead Space 2 swag to give away. Check this out. We have shirts, we have comics, we have mysterious <laughs> mailers with top secret contents and and creepy posters and inflatable plasma cutters so that you can you know pretend to blast the limbs off of anyone who happens to be unfortunate enough Ooh. to be nearby three lucky people are going to get one of each of these things and all you have to do is answer this trivia question what is the secret message spelled out by the chapter titles in the original dead space but that's not all the trivia we have. Maxwell, you have a question for us as well. That's right. You lucky kids at home could win a copy of Spare Parts. We've got 10 codes to give away if you can answer this question. Which famous British actor and comedian lends his voice to the game Spare Parts? Think about that one and let's go back to Carol. And that brings us to perhaps our biggest and craziest prize package of all. In promotion of their new movie, The Mechanic, which features Jason Statham as an assassin, CBS Films is hooking us up with some uh, PS3s, Xbox 360s, games, and movie swag to give out to, to those of you who enjoy the trivia. Uh, we'll, we're not only giving away one of these prize packages today, we'll also be doing it on Tuesday's show and Thursday's show next week. Uh, which brings us to the question. Name five video game characters that are assassins by trade. Entries with a complete and correct list will be entered to win this Xbox 360 prize pack, including Call of Duty Black Ops and movie swag, courtesy of the new motion picture The Mechanic, which opens January 28th. All right, so that was some good trivia. We got a lot of stuff to give away. But now, Carol, I think we've got a tourney to talk about. Indeed we do, Max. A Marvel vs. Capcom 3 tournament, no less. I know this is a game that you and I are really excited about. Uh, and it, this tournament is actually happening here in the GameSpot studios next Thursday, the 27th of January. Uh, you can register for that right up until the last minute, up until the 26th. And you can do that either by visiting our forums here at GameSpot.com or by he heading over to Capcom Unity. Com. You can register there as well. And uh, after the tournament takes place, we are going to be bringing you all that fighting action uh, in three parts. We're going to show you the first part on the 28th of January, the second part's coming to you February 4th, and the third and final part, when the ultimate champion is decided, we'll be sh bringing you on February 11th. And that about does it for our show today. Uh, for everyone here at the GameSpot studio, I'm Carol Pettit. And I'm Max McGee. And we will see you again next week. As Max mentioned earlier in the show, we have, bleh, sorry. Okay, folks, we have so many crazy prizes to give away for you today. We have three different trivia questions for you. So let me just say up front, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. We're building. We're building layers. Yeah. Well, every time we get a little <laughs> bit closer. Okay.